Now, if you remember, we're doing integration, which is basically find an antiderivative and, in some, in other words, find the area underneath the curve, or find the area function of a curve. And we're doing a special case of integration where it doesn't necessarily fit into the integration table exactly. So we use some sort of substitution, typically a use substitution, to make it fit. It's kind of like making this thing work for us, which is great. Now I gave you a couple hints on how to do this. Number one hint is you're usually picking the inside of a function, the inside part. It's typically in parentheses or underneath a square root or something to a power. You don't pick the whole thing. You just pick part of the thing, the part that's actually giving you a problem. For instance, in this case, the part that is not actually in the integration table. So if I'm looking at this, I know cosine's there, but it says cosine x, not 5x. So what I would pick for the u in this case is the 5x. Yeah, that's the inside. Also, we'd say the derivative of your u typically must show up in the integral somewhere disregarding constants. So let me answer this. What's the question of, uh, what's the question? What's the derivative of 5x? Now, we don't care about the 5 being up there because that's a constant. We'll be able to pull that out as 1 fifth. Uh, so basically, just our x's have to match up. So again, our idea was, let's make a u substitution so that our integral will ultimately fit into our integration table. If it fits, then we can do it. If it doesn't fit, we basically can't do it right now. Now, what did we do after we took the substitution? What's the next step? Okay, so derivative of both sides, basically it's implicit differentiation where we're keeping the dx on the right-hand side. So here we'll have du, here we'll have 5 dx, and I've told you to solve for dx. Some people do this differently, uh, some people don't solve for dx, some people try to substitute in for, uh, make it something x dx and substitute in for du. I prefer solving for dx, it just makes it a little bit easier for us. So if we divide both sides by 5, we have du over 5 equals dx. That lets us make our substitution. So we go, all right, the cosine doesn't change, but the 5x, I'm going to let that become u, and I'm going to let dx become du over 5. The key thing for us was that in order to take an integration, or do an integral, two things must happen. It's got to fit your table, and the variables have to match. So our respect to that variable must be the ver only variable you see. If there's x's and u's, you've done something wrong, or you haven't gone very or far enough. So something has to take place where you have one variable, and that's the variable you're talking about. You with me on this so far? Now, the over 5, what can I do with that over 5? That's why we disregard the constants. We really don't care about those. It's all about the variables. So this over 5 <coughs> means 1 fifth cosine u du. That will be one-fifth. All right, folks, let's do the integral of cosine u. Don't say it out loud. I'll give you all just a second to think about it. Try to get in your head before someone says it, okay? So think, think, think as I've been talking and rambling to keep you guys from talking. Have you thought about the integral of cosine u? Of course it's going to be something to do with sine. Is it positive sine or negative sine? Oh, you guys are guessing. Now. Don't guess at this stuff. If you said negative sine, take the derivative of negative sine. It would give you negative cosine. That is not what we have right there. The derivative of sine gives you cosine. Yes, yes. And that's the correct integral, therefore. Does that make sense? So be careful. It's all about the signs with your trig. Uh, it, it's, it's never, I mean, no one's ever going to go, um, tangent, yay, no, no one's ever going to make that mistake. You're all going to give me sign, right? It just depends on whether you get the sign right. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, we're almost done. There's one more thing that we have to do. We, we didn't start in terms of u, so we can't leave it in terms of u. We're going to translate this back to x's. Use the same substitution you, you just made. So our answer, our integral, will be 1 fifth sine of 5x. And of course, we got that plus c at the back end saying that could be any constant and still work as a function. So that I take a derivative of it, gives me back my cosine 5x. By the way, can you check your work? Yes. Uh, absolutely. Take a, a simple derivative. Do you see the chain rule coming back at you? The 1 fifth times the 5 from that chain rule, it's gone. You got your cosine 5x. How many feel okay with our example? That's kind of a refresher from last time since we had a, a weekend in between here. 
Now let's do uh, let's do one where I have you do this completely on your own. See if you can do this, and then I'll show you how to finally finish that example I, I had you look at last time. There you go. Let's work on that one. Not too bad. Just make sure you know the idea of the substitution. Hopefully you in this case that the U is fairly obvious uh, in the in this one. The U is the only thing there. The only thing I, I wanted to make sure you see here is do you take the exponent when you're picking a U? Do you ever take the exponent with it? No, because the derivative has to be there, right? So if I took a derivative of that, it's 15, 2x minus, that's not going to appear again in our integral. That's, that's not going to work out for us. So it's, it's almost exclusively the inside of something. <coughs> Uh, that you pick for your U, and then that works like 90% of the time. By the way, this substitution method sometimes makes integrals go really, really fast. Have you found that out too? So it's kind of nice. If you can find the right substitution, that's the hardest part. Then it works itself out. Last thing we'll do, if you don't want to put a plus C right here, that's fine. Just make sure it's at the very end of your problem. You have to have a plus C. But make sure you have substitute back in for x. I get a lot of people make it down this far, which is technically correct, but it's also te it's also incorrect because we want this in terms of x, not in terms of u. So if you didn't make it down that far, just do your substitution. And that's what we should get. How many people were able to make it down that far on their own? Good, that's that's all about everybody. That's fantastic. All right. Now, if this is new to you, then of course this is going to take you some time to figure out. Now, the last one, before we go on to some a little bit more advanced idea up here, the last one, I think I showed you the first step here last time. I said that don't don't let the integral really confuse you into making you think it's something harder than it is. Uh, namely, if I were to look at that integral right now and try to pick a substitution, there is not a good substitution for that right now because if I pick that as my u, I'm still going to have an x in there, right? So I'd have a du something, and I'd have an x, and that's not going to work out for you. You can't do a direct substitution on that integral the way it is right here, but what you can do is use some of the principles of integrals. They're, they're basically the same as derivatives. Uh, it says you can pull constants outside of your integral if they're being multiplied by some function of x. It says you can split up the integral or derivative by addition and subtraction. Not multiplication, but definitely addition and subtraction. So what this says is this is really not one giant integral. It's actually two separate integrals if you want to think about it that way. So the first thing I'm doing some of these integrals, if they look too daunting, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. See if there's a plus and a minus. If there is, sometimes you're able to separate those and sometimes it makes it easier. And I know I did show this to you last time, but this you can look at as 1 over x squared dx. Don't forget the dx. And secant squared of pi x. Don't forget the dx. Now, can you do this one? What will be the first step on doing that one, by the way? Bring the x to the top. Very good, because it's got to fit your table, right? There's no substitution needed. You don't need that. But you know how to do this one already. You practice that. How about this one? Is there a substitution necessary for this one? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there is, because that's not just an x, that's a pi x. What I'd like you to do is figure that out. Okay, go ahead and do both integrals. This one's kind of a basic one, this one's going to require a substitution for you. So what do you do with these things when it's plus and minus? Well, you're supposed to break up first. This is also what you're supposed to do with your girlfriend right before Valentine's Day, just so you know. <laughs> that way you don't have to buy presents. It's a bogus holiday anyway. <laughs> if you time it right and you break up right before Valentine's and right before her birthday and right before Christmas and get back with her, it's awesome. You save so much money. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, I've never personally done that. I know someone who has done to, but. She actually fell on the trap three times. I'll tell you the story later. Okay, so your u should be pi x. Remember, it's, it's the inside of something. If you're having trouble looking for a u, or finding a u, and there's something in parentheses, try it. What's it hurt? I mean, it takes five seconds to figure out you're wrong, right? That's all it takes. So if you're having trouble, just pick something. And, and if you're wrong, you're wrong. Who cares? Just go back and redo it later. Pick something else. There's only a finite number of selections you can make in an integral. So if you try something and, and you're right, great. If you try something you're wrong, just pick something else. Don't give up. Du in this case is pi dx. So du, oh remember pi is a constant, right? So if it was 3x, it'd be 3. Now it's not 3x, it's 3.141592, whatever, forever, but it's pi. So du over pi equals dx. And now we can go ahead and make our substitution, and it only affects this second integral because I have two distinct integrals now, which is great, and that's what we want. So here we're going to have integral of the secant squared does not change, only the angle changes. Remember, this is not being multiplied either. That is not a multiplication, that's secant of, of, not, not times. That's your angle. You can't manipulate that in any other way besides the substitution. That's going to be a u, and then du over pi. How many people made the substitution looks just like that? Good, that's fantastic. That's correct substitution. Now, this integral is pretty easy. We're going to do x to the negative 3 over negative 3, right? What I do wrong, it's a very common mistake. Yeah, yeah, and some people go, oh, well, you're adding 2 plus 1 is 3. Well, you have negatives here, so it's kind of flipped on you. Negative 1 over negative 1. Don't add a plus c yet, that's fine. We can add a plus c at the very end of our problem. If you add it now, it might get a little confusing for you. Then a plus sign, because we have a plus sign. I know the integral of secant squared u 